Hello, welcome back to the pupil's life. It is a fucking Monday for you, for me, who knows what day it is. Uh, what's up? What is up, man? Dude, I can't wait until I have like a fucking, a real place to record these in, right? And I'm not just in my fucking bedroom staring at the same four walls that I've been staring at for the last three hours. Um, what's going on, man? It, did you have a good Valentine's Day? Did you celebrate with a loved one? Did you feel a lot of good things and hugs and kisses? I hope you did, because I told you to. I fucking told you last week. I said, hey, man, don't be that asshole. Don't be that fucking asshole that doesn't celebrate Valentine's because you're afraid Right? Uh, Valentine's Day happened. And now, what do we have to look forward to? Man, uh, everything is over. Right? We've got to wait until fucking Halloween so that the holiday season can start again. And we can start spending money on chocolates and, and fucking disease, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why disease. Oh, man. Dude, I just got fucking... I, why am I cursing so much, man? I just got home from from swimming uh, and the sauna. It's not... It's It wasn't the, the best session, I'll call it. But, uh, I mean, I, I had a fucking... Another bike accident, dude, right? So this was like a, a recovery session. And and at least I made it, dude. At least I fucking made it to the gym. I didn't use it as the, 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 the I didn't use it as an excuse. And and yeah, I was I was that fucking I was the old man in the pool that was just stretching, right? I did like eight laps, and then I was like, "Fuck, dude, it hurts." Uh but yeah, man, I had a fucking. A fucking bike accident, man. Can you believe it, dude? You go back three fucking episodes, I feel like, it, and I, I was talking about another bike accident. And yet again, yet a fucking again, man. Austin drivers. Ah, uh, what can I say, you know? Uh, not as bad as Cancun, that's for sure. And... But they're still, but they're still terrible, dude. They're still fucking terrible, you know. You got a four-way stop sign, and and yes, it's your turn. But there's fucking people crossing ahead. So why are you gonna fucking block the intersection, man? Like a piece of shit. Like a fucking useless, angry rush hour piece of shit man uh yeah yeah man and then and then you know what the worst part is that i haven't even told you the accident but you know what the worst part is dude this woman practically caused the accident right and then she just fucking like like scurries like shifts fucking scurries her car to the side and away from me and just drives off, right? Like, I'm on the fucking ground, just like, ah, ah, you know, just like touching my shoulder, like, ah, fuck. <laughs> and she's just like, ah, you're in my fucking way. And just, you know. But, dude, basically what happens is I'm, I'm at the fucking stop sign and I stop, you know. I stop on my fucking bike, which no other biker does, dude. I stop at the fucking stop sign like you're fucking supposed to do. And I wait, right? And two cars go. And then it's my turn. And as this fucking, as I'm going to go, dude, this fucking woman starts going. But there's people crossing, dude. Like, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm crossing with these people, you know? And then this woman fucking goes, and so I kind of stop, but then she stops because she sees the people, and I fucking lose my balance and fucking rock it straight off of my bike and land on my shoulder blade, dude. 
on concrete. Just fucking <laughs> land on my fucking shoulder blade, dude. And this woman is just in her, in the comfort of her car, like, oh my god, I I oops, oops, you know. And then she's like, oops, but oh my god, I'm in a rush, and fucking, dude, I should start taking down license plates, you know. That's what I should start doing. I should start taking down license plates, dude, and just fucking, you know, become a vigilante, like a traffic vigilante. Just riding my bike around, dude, looking for license plates that have caused accidents. Just looking for people that have made dumb fucking mistakes. Like this woman the other day. This old, pathetic, old fucking driving a minivan, dude, of course. Because what else are you going to drive in Austin if you're a woman, dude? She's driving this fucking minivan. And you know how when there's like an actual bike lane in a downtown area, dude? It's like divided by a fucking like like a a platform dude almost that you're not supposed to drive over but this woman is like like uh is is that the place that I'm going to uh, is fucking turning and she just goes over the whole thing dude with all of her car and then continues to drive over it and and realizes it drives off of it stops at the stop sign that I had my fucking accident at right there's like a ballet center there which i guess she was going to and and then once she like corrects her mistake she turns toward the ballet center and gets onto another fucking bike lane divider and just like almost fucking goes over the sidewalk just into the parking lot right like i make my own entrances because i'm a woman and it's 2020 and dude, I should fuck I should have fucking taken her license plate down, dude. I remember my mom doing that once, you know? Not taking the license plate down, but I remember, dude, my mom, oh, dude. I don't want to say that's where I get it from because my dad is just as fucking crazy, right? But my mom, dude, she used to be a fucking maniac driver, man. I don't know if she still is, but dude, I remember this one time we were driving uh I don't know where we were driving to. But, but there was a car that was like swerving, right? It was swerving, dude, and like maybe maybe like too much, like a like a legit dangerous driver. And she was like, "Oh my god, this is fucking! I can't stand for this, right?" And she pulls out her phone and dials like Mexican nine one one to report the driver, right? She's like, "License plate is is four C D X X Y Z." And he's and he's swerving, and I've got my children in the car. <laughs> and so I must have retained that dude, because now I want to become a fucking license plate vigilante, and just either that dude or just start carrying like fucking eggs in my backpack, right? Have a little pouch at the front of my bike that just has eggs, dude, and. And when I see some shit like that, dude, just fucking tag them, you know, just just fucking tag them, dude, with an egg and just smear their fucking windshield so that they have to, like, get out of their car and reassess their fucking life, man. You know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start carrying eggs with me and taking pictures of license plates. So if you're driving, dude, in Austin, you better fucking watch out, man. You better watch out because I'm going to be a bike vigilante. And you might get a fucking picture taken, dude, and an egg thrown, you know? I'm not going to do one or the other. I'm going to do both, man. I'm going to take a picture of your fucking license plate, and then I'm going to fucking throw an egg at it, right? And just fucking maybe throw two eggs at you, you know? Fucking if you've got an open window, dude, I'm going to throw it through the open window so that it cracks in your fucking in your fucking face, dude. And maybe some of the shells get in your eyes, dude, and then you, then you go blind and you can never fucking drive again. How about that, man? Maybe that's what I'll start doing, you know? Just fucking carrying eggs with me. Because, dude, it feels so fucking powerless sometimes when you're on your bike. You know, I'll be riding on my bike, and somebody will, like, eh, just fucking honk at me from behind, dude. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? You know, even through my, my noise-canceling earphones, that's the most jarring fucking thing you can do to a cyclist. 
is honk at them when you're right behind them, dude. Like, I know that you're bumping fucking Justin Bieber, and you can barely hear your 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 honk, dude. But us outside, dude, in the fucking real world, we can hear it, man. We can fucking hear it. So unless it's another car, or unless I'm about to, you know, put my mine or your life in danger with my bicycle, dude. Yeah, you don't honk, man. You honk at somebody that's about to do something stupid, not at somebody that's going too slow, because you decided to leave your house five minutes later than you should have, and so now you're trying to make up time, right, by fucking passing cyclists on a one-way, like, dude, I mean, on a two-way, dude, like, one of those one, you know, there's one way on each side, dude, and it's divided by fucking imaginary lines, because the thing is, dude, if you fucking try and pass me, and then, and then it's not, you're not gonna make it in time, dude, you're gonna fucking have to swipe me, and, 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 you know, you're not gonna stay, you're not gonna stick around for the damages, nobody fucking does, dude, um, but yeah, dude, yeah, I had another fucking bike accident, and thank God, dude, I didn't, like, break my arm or some shit, you know, because if I had broken my arm a month after I fucking scraped the whole left side of my body, and, and of course, dude, of course, my fucking accident a month ago was all of my left side, and of course, dude, guess what fucking shoulder blade I landed on, Get just guess what fucking shoulder blade I landed on, my of course dude my fucking right like of course dude my left side is still healing and fate is like oh you're almost there man here you go and just fucks my right side dude right and it's my shoulder blade dude so like riding my bicycle hurts swimming hurts fucking working just putting fucking food together hurts riding hurts dude everything fucking hurts no I'm I'm being a fucking baby, dude. It hurt that day. Like, like that day, I was just in bed with an ice pack on my shoulder. Like, fuck my life, dude. Um, thinking about this woman's license plate, right? And throwing eggs at her. A couple days later, dude, it's mostly fine. Because I've actually, you know, I took some fucking anti-inflammatory shit. And I, I did some swimming rehab. I went in the sauna, you know. I, I did the shit this time. And I feel better. But, dude, I'm going to fucking find that minivan, dude. I'm going to... I'm. You know what I'm going to do? This happened on a Monday, dude. On a Monday at, like, 3.52 p.m. Right by the ballet center, dude. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait next Monday at work, dude. I'm going to leave at the same time. And I'm just going to wait at the stop sign, dude. And look for a white minivan. Look for a fucking white minivan, dude. And just, you know... I'm going to be carrying eggs then. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be carrying some fucking eggs. And and I don't care if it's a crime, dude. I don't give a fuck, dude. I did it in Mexico. You know, I, I went out with one of my buddies once. In a fucking car. Dude, maybe this is karma, you know. All my years of being a fucking young, young douchebag in fucking Mexico, dude. Just riding around in my friend's car in the back seat with like two cartons of eggs dude and a couple other friends windows rolled down just like ah phew, throwing eggs at people and fucking pff, splat on their fucking windshields and you know i could have fucking killed somebody dude uh but yeah dude it's fun it's fun being dangerous not on the fucking bike though that's not fun and it's getting to the point now where i'm like dude the signs are all there Right? I need to start saving fucking money, man, so that I can buy a vehicle and become another one of the angry Austin drivers, dude. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just fucking... It's stressful, man. It is stressful, you know, living in Austin and riding a bicycle, dude. Uh, and it's why when people are like... like Oh, we need to save the earth. You need to be vegan. And you need to do this. And stop using plastic straws. And stop using fucking this. It's like... Dude, I may not have decided to ride a bike because of this. But I'm the most 
fucking green person there is, dude. You know, like, like my one of my buddies, dude, he's vegan, right? He has a car, dude. I have a bicycle. And so I don't care how much meat I'm eating, dude. Our impact, our fucking footprint, dude, does not compare. So just because you call yourself a vegan, dude, doesn't make you better than me, you know? And I'm not saying I'm better than you, dude, but I'm just not fucking worried about that shit, right? Dude, it stresses me out so much when people think, like, you know, like, like, especially vegans, dude. Like fucking Joaquin Phoenix. Just go up there, shut your fucking mouth, dude, accept your Oscar, and then go about your merry way, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I get that you think that this is what needs to happen, dude, and maybe it is, but you're a fucking celebrity, dude, and you're, and you're at an awards ceremony, so like, god damn it, of course the fucking dog is gonna go crazy now, dude, of course, of course, dude, of course, dude, just fucking, of course, dude, but you're at a fucking awards ceremony. And, you know, you're not at a fucking climate change conference. Like, I don't know, dude. It's just so fucking stupid. And then, and then that's the one thing, dude, is that, like, people are like, well, well, once you have a voice, you need to know how to use it. And it's like, dude, do you? You know? Do you really? Can't people make decisions for themselves, dude? Since you know, when when has it ever when has it ever been the case that somebody tells you uh, 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 this is this is what we need to do to save the earth and then you go and and do it for the rest of your life, dude? Right? When has that ever fucking been the case? When has that ever been the fucking case, man? You know, in high school. When your teacher was like, today we're going to watch a documentary about starving children in Africa. And uh, so that you can all maybe maybe take a little bit of this home with you. And, and, and you know, it doesn't matter if you, if you decide to join the fucking Red Hand Day or if you just decide to start recycling, right? It's all the same. And it's like, did you go home, dude, and then fucking start recycling and, and now you still recycle for the rest of your life, dude? At, at your home, at your work, at all the fucking places that you eat, right? Like, can we all just get a fucking break, man, and try and do our best without being reminded, you know, of how shitty we are? Because we're not, dude. We're not fucking shitty. The only way that we're shitty, dude, is is that a lot of us are not taking care of our mental health, man. That's the only way that we're shitty. Everything else, dude, is just fucking, you know, it, it's, I don't know, man, I, I don't, fuck it, dude, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even like to talk about that shit, I don't even like to talk about that shit, and I love Joaquin, dude, as an actor, like, as his characters, but it's so fucking, like, silly, dude, you know, nobody gives a fuck, nobody gives a fuck what you have to say, Joaquin Unless you're in a fucking character, in a movie, dude, because that is what your job is. Your job is not to fucking tell me that I can't eat, drink a milk, dude. And to explain that we're taking babies from cows and fucking doing God knows what. It's like, dude, if you, you know what, dude, if you want to do that, somebody else already did it better than you, dude. And his name is Lil Dicky. You know, go watch fucking Pillow Talk on YouTube. And, and that's him making a statement, dude, but still doing his job and still fucking entertaining us, not fucking cutting the whole fucking emotion and, and thrill of an award ceremony to be like, we're all pieces of shit and we should feel bad. It's like, dude, we're fucking celebrating, okay? You know, it's like, it's like your fucking, your parents, dude, when you're a kid and you're like... You're like, oh, oh, dad, I got, I got second place in a fucking 2,700 person poker tournament. 
And then your dad being like, yeah, well, that's not first place, kiddo. That's not first place. Uh, and, you know, you know, the one thing you neglected is that while you were getting second place in that 2,700 person poker tournament, you were you you were neglecting your homework. And if you don't do your homework, then, you know, it's like, dude, can I get a fucking moment to celebrate what I did, dude, and what I accomplished without having to feel bad about it? I don't get it, man. Like, it's fun to make fun of, like, celebrities and they're like, um, like, thank you so much. Like, it's fun to make fun of celebrities, right? But, like, when people go up there and they give their speech and they use that to shame other celebrities, dude, that's so fucking, like, that's the that's the most virtue signal, virtue signaling thing you could possibly do, right? It's like, here is a celebrity going up there in front of other celebrities and being like, but I'm better because, because I'm, because I'm saying something, right? I don't know, man. It's so fucking stupid. And then everybody's like, oh my god, the internet broke because of Joaquin Phoenix's speech. Like, the fucking headlines on YouTube these days, man. Oh my god. Uh... But anyway, man, I had a bike accident. And you know what, dude? I didn't I didn't just have a bike accident, right? Because that would be you know, that would be that would be too good for for what my life is like, dude. Like in one week for what my life is like, to have just a bike accident, dude, would be too good. And so what do you what what has to happen, dude, to make it like not good enough of a week is that is that I have a bike accident on Monday, dude. And then on fucking Wednesday, as I go to as I go to get lunch with a friend of mine, dude, and the one time, dude, that I don't bring my fucking backpack with me that has all my bike shit in it, the one time, dude, I get a fucking flat tire. You know? I carry an extra tube, a fucking CO2 cartridge, and a little lever, dude, to replace a flat in my backpack. And I've been carrying it for like a year now. And I haven't gotten a flat, right? And then the one day, dude. The fucking one day. The fucking one day, dude. That I don't bring the shit to fix the flat with. I get the fucking flat, dude. That's just... That's just some... Uh, that's That's some bullshit, dude. And... Yeah, dude. I don't even have anything to say about it other than just... and then, Well, no, dude. Then I came home and, you know, I had some other things that I wanted to get done. And I came home, dude, after a fucking hour and a half of taking the bus, dude. Right? My house is like a mile and, and 800 feet away or whatever the fuck. And, and it takes me an hour and a half to get home. Right? It's like either 50 minutes of carrying my bike, walking, or an hour and a half, dude, of taking the bus. A mile and a half, dude. Like, that's the kind of... And it's because it was fucking rush hour, dude, right? The bus system in Austin is great. I don't fucking understand people that say that the bus system in Austin is terrible, dude. They clearly haven't been to parts of the universe where the fucking bus is terrible, dude. And so that they're just in their privilege being like, Oh my god, if I... <laughs> just you know like that's what i picture complainers dude that's just the sound that a complainer makes it's like oh, uh, uh, just uh, uh. and but i get home dude i get fucking home and i'm like dude i'm gonna you know i'm gonna give myself a fucking breather dude i'm not gonna try and fix it right away i'm gonna put it aside dude and maybe later tonight i can try and fix it right so i like i do i fucking I try to meditate, right, and chill myself out. I fucking listen to some music, dude. Try and sit down and write. Can't do it, of course. Fucking, because I'm thinking about my bike, dude. I'm OCD like that. And then, and then as soon as I decide to start fixing the bike, it's like 7 p.m., dude. And I fix it. At, I'm done fixing it at 8. And I go out for a test run, dude. And then guess what, dude? Something else goes wrong with the bike. Of course. Because I can't just fix it and then the bike is okay, dude. I have to fix it and then something else goes is wrong with the bike after. 
because that's just that's just how it is you can't just something breaks and then you fix it and problem solved dude something breaks you fix it and something else breaks and that's how the that's how life is um and so i fixed the fucking flat dude i put the tire back on and then the brakes are are too close to the rim dude so i can't ride the bike without the brake just automatically trying to brake the fucking bike and and so so by the time that i finished repairing the thing that i broke trying to repair my fucking flat tire dude it was like 10 fucking 45 p.m dude so i spent nearly four hours sweating dude with you know sweating looking at fucking youtube tutorials of how to fix your bike your bike and your brakes and and giving myself a headache dude and a fucking a fever nearly dude oh man so that's the fucking week that i've been having that's the fucking week that i have been having dude um what else man what the fuck else is there anything positive to talk about no i mean all of this to be honest dude all of these things happened and i i'm playing that i'm i'm playing them up dude because i think that it's funny but i i am actually happy dude because the this time i would i did not react as much as i normally would like when i got my flat dude the, what you know what you want to know what I, how i reacted i just was like <laughs> dude of course <laughs> just like that's how i reacted it was like <laughs> of course and then i just pulled out my phone and i'm like all right where's the next bus dude and i just walked to the bus and i was you know like that's that's the full extent of of how it happened and when I had my bike accident, dude, maybe it was the shock or something. I just kind of, no, I, I did, you know, I, I was like, fuck, dude, you know, just on the street, just like, ah, fuck, dude. And people were like, oh, my God, are you okay? And I was like, just fucking, ah, dude, leave me alone. Just, ah, fuck, dude. But, um, but it's a lot different than the last time I had a bike accident, right? The last time I had a bike accident, dude, I fucking started sobbing by the river, dude, like, nearly had a fucking mental breakdown dude just fucking weeping by the river you know like thinking about girlfriends that have broken up with me and like thinking about my family dude and thinking about all the, all the shit right that that boils up and then comes out in the worst possible moments um and so for you know maybe if i had broken my fucking shoulder blade i would have had a mental breakdown dude but uh i didn't dude and so I'm grateful for that. Um, you know what I'm not grateful for, dude? You know what I'm not fucking grateful for? Is this fucking stand-up class, dude, that I signed up for. Because, oh, yeah, dude, of course, as fate would have it, dude. You know, guess what most of the people, guess the gender of most of the people in my fucking stand-up comedy class. Ah, you guessed it, dude. Women. Females. Um, and not just that, dude, but the kind of female that wants to get offended at comedy. And it's like, dude, give me, give me a fucking refund, dude, right? Like... Uh, I don't know, man. Like, one of them was, like, it's just, I, I guess I should fucking preface this with, like, I signed up for stand-up comedy, dude, because I, uh, because, like, dude, for so long, I, I hung out with a group of people with my ex-girlfriend that were very fucking virtue signaling, you know, um, like, PC for no fucking reason, right? People that are like, oh, my God you're a republican and like not me dude but just like to somebody that's a republican they're like i can't i cannot talk to somebody that could entertain the possibility of voting for trump right it's like i spent so much time with those people dude getting so fucking frustrated that i'm like dude can i just like uh like comedy is this, like this last frontier man where you can go and just say whatever the fuck dude and eventually make it into something good, dude. But, but like, 
the people that you're practicing comedy with are not going to be the people that are getting offended, dude. Like, the audiences might, but that's part of it, right? And so I sign up for a stand-up comedy class, and it's all fucking, not all of them, dude. I'm exaggerating, but but there's just a few women in there, dude, that are like, yeah, I, so I go to another stand-up comedy class, and we had a showcase, right? And, like, there was this one guy that, like, he, like, he was just, the jokes he was making were, like, misogynist, right? And, like, 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 people were laughing, but, like, I think they were laughing because they were uncomfortable. It's like, dude, yeah, you fucking, like, dude, people were laughing, but I think I know better than they know why they were laughing. Dude, you know, people were laughing, but I think it was because they were uncomfortable. It's like the biggest fucking projection. Uh, and then she's like, I think they were laughing uncomfortably because a lot of what he was saying was very misogynistic. And the teacher was like, oh, yeah, well, you know, sometimes you have those kind of comedians and it's like, Oh, dude, so you're my teacher? Like, you're the fucking person that I signed up to learn from? And you're saying, you know, like, maybe this fucking guy is trying material, dude. And yes, it starts off as misogynistic. If that's the case, right? Because we're hearing this from a woman. We're hearing this from a woman, dude. So if it's the case that this woman is, you know, fucking mature enough to be able to dis... To make the distinction between actual misogyny and her own fucking insecurities. And the teacher is taking the side of the fucking person who was in a stand-up class. You know, now it's like, dude. So now I can't make misogynistic jokes? Right? Like, fucking... You know? Fucking, dude, we, we can make jokes about anything, dude. And I signed up for a stand-up comedy class because I wanted to learn how to make a joke about something like you know the the fucking the best way dude not to make a not to make th the best possible joke out of only a few certain topics dude you know and it's so fucking bullshit man i wish that i could get my money back and i wish that i could leave a fucking bad review but the theater is closing down anyway dude no fucking surprise there you know how many other men must have signed up for this and then be like, oh, fucking, of course, dude. I signed up for a stand-up comedy class taught by a woman, dude. What what, what did I think, dude, that there were going to be 15 other guys here? And she was just going to be, like, li li like, listening to a bunch of misogynists, you know? Like, sometimes I do things, man, and then in retrospect, I'm like, ah, oh, duh. You know, just fucking, ah, uh, duh. And sometimes I do things, man, and I'm just fucking like, uh, duh, you know, uh, but I still fucking, I'm still doing those jokes, man. I'm still fucking, you know, fuck the, fuck the man, dude. Fuck the woman, man. Fuck the woman, dude. Cause I can fucking, in a way it's like, dude, this will make it even more challenging, right? Cause if I can... If I can make a joke about a woman, dude, to a crowd of only women and still get them to laugh, dude, fucking yes, dude. I can fucking do whatever I want, dude, if that's the case. Uh, but it's, dude, it's just so fucking, like, it's, it's just, I was trying to get away from a certain group of people, dude, and I just got myself into that same group of people. Dude, except that I paid fucking $200 for it, right? And and I don't know, man. Like, I, you know, dude, like, but, but they get to make fun of men, dude. And it's just like, dude, I feel like a fucking housewife in the 1950s that, that's going out with her husband, right? And all of his friends. And they're just like, oh, dude, you see that fucking broad the other day? She was fucking, you know, like. And and you're just there like, this is weird, but I guess this is how things are, right? Like, that's the fucking... And, and most women are not like this, dude. 
but but there are some women that are just so fucking angry, dude, because either because of because their dad didn't fucking stick around, dude, or because some boyfriend, you know, hurt them and now they want to fucking take that out on all the rest of the men in the world. Or because they their fucking little Hillary didn't win and and now we've got Trump and they're upset, dude, right? Because oh my god, can we ever just get a woman to be president, dude? It's like, dude, can you fucking can you fucking get a woman to be president, right? Like, since when did it just become, like, ah, oh, dude, I'm half Mexican, dude. Can I get some fucking privileges, dude? Because I'm a minority, right? Like, I'm fucking, I'm half Mexican, dude. Can I just fucking, can I get that job just because I'm half Mexican, dude? Oh, oh, you gave it to a full white? Oh my god, dude, I'm triggered. You know, like... Just because you're a fucking woman, dude, doesn't mean shit, man. Does not mean shit, dude. Do not pretend that you're like, that you've been as oppressed as black people, you know? Stop fucking, ah, oh, man, it's so upsetting, dude. It's so upsetting. Maybe I've been listening to too much Bill Burr, dude. I don't know. Um, I don't fucking know. But, uh, but I signed up for this stand-up comedy class, and now I'm, now I'm trying to tell jokes, uh to a crowd of people that I don't want to tell jokes to, man, you know, and it's one thing to be telling it to a crowd of people that might have people you don't want that your jokes are not for, dude, but to be just be that, that's everyone, dude, it's like, and the teacher at the beginning, she was like, I want everybody to know that this is a safe space to try any kind of joke, and then they're like, oh, yeah, misogyny, like, uh, there's still people that do, and it's like, dude, I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. I don't fucking, you know. That's just the world we live in, man. That's just the world we live in, dude. Um, can we just get a woman to be president for for once and for all? Uh, yeah, dude. When you get the right one, and when she does the fucking the thing that she's supposed to do to win, dude. Like, you know, like fucking. I'm not saying I, I I wanted Trump to win, dude. I don't I don't give a fuck who wins. But to just be like, it's because she's a woman that she didn't win, isn't it? It's like, dude. Ah, dude, I'm not gonna fucking. That's like all I can talk about is things that I get annoyed talking about, dude. You know, it's so fucking dumb. Why do I even do this? I'm just making myself more upset the more that I talk about it. Um, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch to a lighter, I'm gonna switch to a lighter thing, because this is just triggering me so much. Uh, I've been going to the YMCA regularly, and something that I didn't grow up with, dude, but it's fucking, I'm embracing, is, is being naked in the locker rooms, you know, because, uh, I don't know, dude. It's just, you know, the f I remember the first time, dude, that I went to a YMCA. I must have been like eight or nine, dude, visiting my grandparents in California. And I went to the YMCA with my mom and my brother and I were like, dude, let's go to the fucking jacuzzi, man, right? <laughs> and and so we go to the we go into the locker rooms. And I'm walking around, dude, and there's just like 50 year old men naked, just cocks swinging at my height right and and i was like <gasps> just froze dude like you know because that was the that was the the second time i was seeing another man's cock dude that wasn't mine or my dad's uh or my brother's dude i think we used to take showers together um dude that's so fucking weird to think about that like me and my brother used to take baths together and like play with fucking action figures, you know, just naked, just fucking not even not even showering, dude. We just we would just play with action figures in the bathtub naked. <laughs> we would just fucking you want be like, dude, you want to fucking you want to fucking shower? Like that was our code word was like, dude, you want to shower? And and shower was just our way of saying like, dude, do you want to get naked? And play with Spider-Man and Batman in the bathtub, dude. And fucking bubbles. 
Uh, dude, that's so fucking, that's so funny and it's so fucking cute too. I'm going to let my kids do that, dude. I'm just going to be like, hey kids, it's time to shower and just fucking bring out a box full of action figures. Uh, oh man. But, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, dude. So we're in the fucking, so that's the first time that I was in a YMCA where there's like naked people, right? And then maybe like senior year of high school. Me and my whole generation, we we go like to Playa del Carmen, dude. A couple of us stay at different hotels, right? And the kids that I'm staying with, they're on the swim team. Two of them, two of the pe- people we're staying with are on the swim team, and we're in the we're in the the hotel room getting ready to go out. And and one of them is in the shower, and he comes out, dude, just butt naked. He just comes out into the fucking the hotel room that all three of us are like chilling and talking in, just butt naked, right? And, and, and I was like, oh, dude, what the fuck, right? Like, me and the other guy that aren't on the swim team were like, whoa, dude, cover up. And then the other guy and him that are on the swim team were like, oh, 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 it's, no, 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 it's normal. Like, we're on the swim team, right? And it's like, dude, so, so that just means, you know, like, oh, I'm on the swim team, dude. So I can just fucking walk around naked in front of other people. Like, that's what, that's what being on the swim team is, is I can just walk around naked in front of other people. Uh... But so I slowly started to realize, you know, like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm in the minority here. And it's because my parents fucking, you know, there was a lot of shame around sexuality and we didn't really talk about that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I would fucking walk around in my underwear and my mom would always be like, you've got to, you've got to dress when there's people here, honey. And it's like, dude, I'm fucking seven years old. No, I don't, dude. I'm fucking 10 years old, dude. No, I don't, dude. I'm fucking 14 years old, dude. No, I don't. I can fucking walk around in my underwear in my house until I'm 18, dude. And then it won't be my house anymore. And then I can walk around naked in my fucking apartment, dude. Because that is something I can do. And I like to be comfortable. So I'm going to do that, dude. Um... But so I've been going to the YMCA now, dude. And I'm just like, dude, fuck it. I'm going to start walking around naked, too. You know, nobody knows that I'm not used to this, dude. So I'm just going to fucking walk around naked, dude. And I like, you know, you know, I, 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 it feels good, man. It's just like, dude, fuck yeah, dude. Just fuck yeah, dude. Just got my fucking junk hanging out. Going to shower, dude, right? There's people walking by. Just, just men, dude. Just men walking in and out of the showers, right? And I'm just showering there, dude. Just like fucking rubbing my asshole, dude. Fucking da la la. Just singing and like. Like I'm in my fucking apartment, dude, and it feels so good, dude, to just not care. And to just be like, oh, dude, you're naked too, man? Haha, <laughs> I'm naked too, man. What a great fucking world we live in, right? Uh, and it's funny, man. You know, like, for, for my whole childhood, I was like, dude, like, you know, you're self-conscious about your, about your junk. Even if you're a woman, you're self-conscious. You're like, oh, my God, is it too fucking... Is it too hairy? Is it too fucking tight? Is it too fucking engorged, dude? I don't know. I don't know what it's like as a woman, but but as a boy, you're like, you're either cut or you're uncut, dude. And you never know who is what, dude, because it's just fucking, like, nobody says, oh, dude, I'm fucking, I'm cut, dude. You know, like, nobody fucking goes around saying, like, dude, my dick is cut, man. And nobody goes around saying, like, dude, my dick is uncut, man. Uh, and nobody goes around saying like, dude, I've got a small dick, right? Uh, and so everybody's just walking around like, dude, is my dick the smallest, right? Like, I don't have a frame of reference. Is my, is maybe my dick is the smallest, right? And if you're insecure, like I was, dude, because fucking didn't have any affirmation and uh, validation at home, dude, I was just like, dude, you know, I had, I had a fucking average size dick, dude. I don't, I don't. I don't, I have a, I have an average size dick, dude. I'm a white, I'm a fucking white male, dude. And, but my whole life I thought like, dude, I've got a tiny dick. And now that I'm walking around the fucking YMCA, dude, like, dude, I'm just like, everyone's got a fucking tiny dick, dude. You know, everybody has a tiny dick until they're going to have sex, man. You know, there's the exception 
you know, there's some people that just have huge fucking dicks all of the time, dude. But most people just have a tiny dick, man, until they're about to have sex. And then it becomes, you know, a, a, a fair sized dick. And once I saw that, man, you know, I'm not just like sitting in the fucking locker room trying to scope out other men's dicks. But, you know, you walk into the locker room and, if, and when you're not used to it, you can't help but just fucking do a double take, you know, like. You walk in and you and you make a sharp right turn into the lockers and they're just a naked dude fucking splayed out, you know, like putting on socks. And and he's got, you know, a fucking anteater just in the middle of his legs. Uh, <laughs> and so it's it's uh, it's reassuring in a way to see fucking 45, 50 year old men. And, and and see some of them that I'm even like, oh, oh, you've got even a smaller penis than I do. And you're fucking 50, dude. Um, but it feels good, dude, walking around naked and just embracing my sexuality, dude. Or not, not my sexuality, but my fucking body. Um, yeah, man, it's fucking great. It's fucking great, man. Um... Oh, what else have I been up to? I'm tiring myself out, man. This, you know, this is what parents should do. Um, this, this should be one of those. You know how you've like you come home and your dog's tired and, or your dog's fucking hyperactive, so you like take your dog out for a walk and then it's tired and it goes to sleep. And with children, it's like, oh, we're gonna go out for a walk, kids. And then they come home and they're just like uh, fucking tired. You know, something you should do with like teenagers, dude, is just like set a fucking microphone down on a table and be like, you and your sibling, you're just going to talk for an hour and tire each other out. And then you'll be, you know, you're good. You can go to sleep. <sighs> um, what the fuck else, man? You know, I'm working four days a week right now, under 30 hours a week, dude. So, uh, work snapping, you know, I still dread going into work because the people, right? And the fucking, the one guy that I enjoy working with he, is, is in Colombia for like a week. So I'm working with the other people even more now. Um, but, uh, but, uh, what else, man? Fucking, I guess, yeah, what, yeah, what I was just to finish that thought, man. Uh, I am grateful that I'm only working four days a week. And, and I don't know, man. I watched the Oscars. I already kind of talked about the Oscars. No, I talked about fucking Joaquin Phoenix, dude. Um, nobody gives a shit about the Oscars, man. Uh, basically, dude, I thought Joker should have won all fucking 11 Oscars and just swept, right? But it goes back to women being president, man. It's like you're a fucking, you're a Korean dude. Of course they're going to give you a fucking, you know, like, not even Mexicans, dude, got that privilege. Not even Roma got the privilege of winning Best International Feature and also Best Picture, dude. They gave it to fucking Green Book, dude. Like, dude, of all the movies from last year's oscars the only movie that could compete with the ones from this year dude is roma and green book was best best picture dude so you've got green book beats out roma for best picture and this year dude you've got parasite which already won screenplay and international feature and you've got it up against fucking tarantino scorsese Fucking Noah Baumbach, dude. Fucking Joker. 1917. Sam Mendes, dude. You've got, like, a bunch of masterpieces, dude. And you're just gonna be like, no, no, no. This movie is was, was, was better than all of those movies. So much that it's gonna win both. It's so fucking stupid, man. And it's just the Oscars being like, yeah, we've got no blacks, but we've got Koreans. Ha, ha, ha. But everybody can see through it, man. Everybody can see through it, right? Because it used to be at the Oscars, dude, that, that one movie won like six or seven Oscars and all the other ones got, you know, one, maybe two, maybe three. 
Uh, and now, dude, it's like Parasite got four. Fucking Joker got two. You know, uh, Ford versus Ferrari got three, dude. You've got 1917 got like two. You've, you know, it's so fucking evened out, dude, that it's... Um, it's just obvious, dude, that they're like, all right, we don't want to upset anybody. Oh. But then they bring out fucking Joaquin Phoenix to upset everybody, dude. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. But you had Eminem, dude. That was the fucking highlight of the Oscars. You know? That was the highlight of the Oscars, was just watching people not know what to do with Eminem. Fucking surprise album, dude. Surprise Oscar performance. And people are still like, when is he going to retire? It's like, dude, this guy is fucking killing it, man. Like, this guy is not only prolific, he is fucking murdering, man. He's got, like, the most listeners on Spotify, dude. You know, fucking every album he puts out goes, like, fucking quad quintuple platinum. And... Ah, dude, I don't know, dude. The world's just upside down. Um, the world is just upside down. I, uh, dude, you know what I, you know what I've been thinking about recently, especially with the Oscars, is that uh, you know how they, you know how there's certain actors that you know they have a career, and then it sort of dies down. You know, you got like Freddie Prince Jr. Maybe not Freddie Prince Jr., but you've got like you know Travolta. Uh, fucking champagne, dude. You've got, you know, ah, uh, dude. Who, who else, dude? Like, uh, you know, those people that like that that Tarantino then puts in a movie and their career is fucking explodes again. Michael Keaton, dude. Like he had a career, and then it, you know, it sort of fizzled out, and then he did Birdman, dude, and now all of a sudden he's like back at back at the top, dude. Um, and, and dude, I've been thinking like Nick Cage, dude, he's next on the list, you know, he's been making a bunch of shit, gore, fucking horror, horror movies. And, and I think, you know, next year, maybe a couple years down the line, he's going to have a movie come out, dude. And it's going to be, you know, he's going to, he's going to make a movie with like, Paul Thomas Anderson, dude, and it's gonna be the role of a lifetime, dude, and then everybody's gonna be like, dude, Nick Cage, where fucking were you? You know, it's gonna be a movie about like fucking what's what's Nick Cage's comeback gonna be? Uh not not fucking Nick Cage's comeback movie, dude, it's gonna be like a biopic of Stanley Kubrick or something. You know, like like Nick Cage could fucking play Stanley Kubrick. Just gain some weight. He's going to gain some weight, dude. That's what he's going to fucking do. He's going to gain fucking 70 pounds and grow out his fucking beard when he's in like his late 60s. And he's going to play Stanley Kubrick, man. And they're going to use that same de-aging technology from Irishman so that he can play Stanley Kubrick when he was younger, dude. And it's going to be Paul Thomas Anderson because he's a fucking film fan. And it's going to be the best movie, dude. And it's just going to be Nick Cage, dude, sweeps at the Oscars, dude. And people are going to be like, oh, my God, dude, Nick Cage, where have you fucking been, man? You're Stanley Kubrick, man. Oh, fuck, dude. And people are not going to know what to do with themselves. Then people are going to go back and look at his old movies. And they're going to be like, dude, he was fucking great. Like, he was always great, man. How do we miss this? Uh, dude, that's what it's gotten to, you know? That's what the fucking podcast has gotten to. Uh, dude, I don't fucking... Dude, I'm hungry. Um, I'm fucking hungry, and I'm tired, dude. And I've got five minutes to go. Um, uh, dude, I don't know, man. You know, what can I... I've I've been trying to write write comedy now that I'm in the stand up class because we got to do seven minutes of material 
by next Sunday, dude. And all I can think about is like, oh, dude, there's fucking only women and none of them are going to laugh at this. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to knowingly go on fucking stage and bomb in front of eight women and my friend Mark. That's what I paid $250 for is to knowingly bomb in front of eight women and my friend Mark, dude. Uh, but I don't know. Like, like, dude, I've been like, I made a, I made a joke. I made a joke about women, right? In front of them, dude. Because I was like the first class I went up and it was like uh, kind of mixed feelings. And then I was like, dude, fuck it, dude. I'm going to make fun of you so that even, so that I'm winning even if you don't laugh. And 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 the bit I did, it was so fucking dumb, dude. But I mean, I, I've been doing stand-up for like two weeks, so it should be fucking stupid. And these women should not be like, ugh, that's a, that's a misogynist. You know, they should be supportive, dude. The way that I'm supportive of their jokes when they go up and they're like, so I'm a zoologist. And and in my head, I'm like, and why do I give a fuck, dude? But in my fucking body, I'm like, oh, dude, cool. Like, and if it's funny, I laugh. And if it's not, I don't just, I just don't say anything. But I'm not like, so um, that zoologist joke, you know, like zoos are not the best thing for the environment, and you know, like just fucking listen, dude. For once in your life, dude, just fucking listen, dude. And if you don't like something, don't react, dude. You know, just listen, and if you don't like it, just shut your mouth. Because nobody gives a shit if you don't like something, dude. Unless they're, like, your boyfriend, dude, or your girlfriend, or your fucking family member, or or something serious happened, dude. Nobody gives a shit if you don't like what somebody said at a comedy class. But so I went up on stage, dude, right? And I'm like... Uh, I'm, I basically am making fun of the fact that I only like to wear comfortable clothes because I do, man. I fucking, I never dress up for anything, dude, unless it's an interview, like a job interview or a date, you know, and I, and I, and I don't do it because I'm terrible at dressing up. I'm terrible at picking out outfits and I don't like wearing shit that's uncomfortable, but I'll wear, I'll wear something that's uncomfortable on a first date or a job interview um but when i go to the date you know it's like it's kind of it's like an unspoken agreement dude right that's like you know if this works out these aren't the clothes that i'm going to be wearing uh then the next date you know or you know it's just so that you know like oh i i care right enough to like pretend on the first date and then you can sort of just just know the real me and so i was like dude like women do it all the time right it's like false advertising and women do it all the fucking time because you know if if you're a woman dude and you're and and you're wearing all of your makeup to a first date then you should also sort of be you know as men we should be entitled to the same treatment dude like on the second date just show up and be like just just tell the truth, right? So that on the first date you come in and it's like, just so you know, like, if this works out, like, this isn't the same face that you're going to be waking up to or going to sleep to. Um, unless you're one of those women that, like, puts on all your fucking makeup before you go to bed. Or just not all, just, if you're a woman that puts on makeup before you go to bed, man, you've got a lot of emotional issues, that you're not looking at dude or that you haven't peeled enough layers off of right but but nick i want to look good in my dreams and dude that's like fucking like that's like fucking dressing up to go to the grocery store it's like nothing you do in your dreams matters dude and nothing that i do in the fucking grocery store matters and so why am i gonna put on a fucking suit to go buy some almond butter and and a few apples right like f- fucking why are you gonna put on makeup dude to go to to go to sleep that's the dumbest fucking thing i've ever heard of man and and so this is the joke that i was making dude and right it's like it's not i think it's it's a good idea man maybe i'm just not you know i haven't figured out the best way to tell it And you could just see the look on all these women's faces, right? They're like, oh, this fucking white male making fun of us. 
for something that we've had to do that we don't want to do? You think we want to wear makeup to bed? You think we want to wear makeup on a first date? I fucking think you do. Because who wants to look like you on a first date, man? Who wants to look like you do on a first date, man? Nobody. And you want to get the kind of guy that wants to be with somebody that doesn't look like you. So you're going to make yourself look like somebody else, man. And you're fucking pissed about it. Uh, and that's the fucking podcast, dude. Because I'm fucking sick and tired of this bullshit. And all the fucking... I don't know, dude. I just feel like raging right now, dude, right? I wish I had a heavy bag in my fucking bedroom so that I could just, after I'm done with the podcast, just fucking kick it like a hundred times and then pass out and wake up happy. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, thanks for tuning in to the to fucking Pupil's Life, dude. Still pending potential new name in the works. Uh, and And yeah, man. That's going to be the podcast, so, so, uh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Have a good week, man. Have a good fucking week, and thanks for listening.